Hi everybody, I'm Frank Adair, uh, lifelong resident of Peekskill in the town of Cortland. Um, I was going to see today that I'm obsessed and passionate about this area. Um, it has some of the greatest history in the whole country. Um, I think you're going to enjoy this topic. Um, right now we're standing in front of the uh, Uri Hill um, Elementary School. And believe it or not, this was the only school left in the school district that is named after a Cortland uh, Town Supervisor. And when this topic, you understand, gee, why would they do such a thing? This is Peekskill. And you can enjoy this. But for 150 years, the village of Peekskill is divided in half by McGregory Brook. So McGregory Brook North would be the north side. Anything south of the McGregory Brook would be the south side. Now, the school districts were administered by the town of Cortland. And they actually start, it was 15 by the time the 1920s um, arrived. And there was a, a move a movement by the uh, state of New York to have all the districts merge um, so they didn't have 15 principals and they weren't so top heavy in administrative work. So what they do is um, in 1923 the people vote to merge the school district north and south and believe it or not it's the first movement to actually make this unified village and um, becomes one of the most diversified communities in all of America. So we're going to start with the, um, the south side is uh, school district number seven, and um, that would be Drum Hill. The north side is school district number eight, that's Oakside. Now, when they vote in, in, in 1923, um, like I said, everything was separate. The fire departments, uh, the post office, depending on who was the postmaster, whether it be north and south, a police officer would be, if whatever party got in, North Side would be dominated by the Republicans, side pretty much the Democrats. But if whatever party uh, succeeded in, in, in taking office, police officers would lose their jobs, or any civil, could be from the Department of Public Works, they would lose their job until s some party regained the strength. So it's really interesting to see what an impact the schools had on this community. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Um, thanks to Michael Miner. Um, Facebook for making this really happen. I, um, we're going to really expand what we're doing. I'm having so much fun with Facebook and all the people that are uh, uh, really contacting me looking for, for photos or, or past stories. Please step back and enjoy. Thanks. All right, this is Peaceful at Friendly Town sign. It was posted at the southern entrance of the village in February of 1922. Um, we started as soon as there was a approval to build the Bear Mountain Bridge. There was a whole new, renewed thinking about how the village was going to be transformed from a stove manufacturing community into an urban center. So between the bridge and all the excitement taking place in the village, they knew because of the division that there had to be some big, uh, big changes in, in the way our culture was. You couldn't keep continuing the way we're going, having everything divided by McGregory Brook. So the Friendly Town Association not only formed a, a social organization, they were very much involved in, in, in dedicating a lot of the parks and making contact with the school board and village officials and making a movement to the unified community. This shows you the first Drum Hill School Building. It was built uh, just before the Civil War in 1859 and it was used and occupied by the Southside School District all the way up until 1910. You can actually see the uh, architecture. It has a lot of uh, flavor from the Irish communities. Uh, all the red brick um, was a magnificent school strictly for the south side. This shows you the original Park Street School building or the Finktown School for the um, northeast section of, um, of uh, the village of Peekskill. Um, Finktown was really Park Street and Lincoln Terrace. Now, the school was actually located right out in the very corner of Park and Southern Avenue. The Franklin Street School Building, built in 1902, uh, was built to accommodate the uh, expansion of Washington Street area, which would be the southern um, tip of, of the village of Pisco. It was at the corner of Franklin and Smith Streets, and that encompassed the old three schools in District Number 7. This is 1909, shows you construction of the uh, interior view of the new Drumhill High School 
it was built directly where the original Drum Hill School was, and the Drum Hill building is still there. It's an assisted living building today. And as you can see, in the center stairway was the Goddess of History. It was built right along with the construction of the building. Um, this center stairway was very unique. I actually went to school there in, in the early 60s, and only the teachers were allowed on that stairway. No, no students, other than Christmas, when they would have the tree located at the same spot. The new Drum Hills High School shows the exterior view. Uh, what a magnificent building. Um, it was built by the Peace Construction Company uh, with the Italian immigrant Antonio Renzo. Uh, and a beautiful elaborate building. And to, the, to this day, I think, it's probably one of the nicest looking buildings in, in the city of Peace Club today. Absolutely magnificent. This is 1910. This shows the, the front view of the school. It's the dedication of the new Drum Hill High School. Uh, again, if you look in, in the image there, all you can see is trees in the background. Why? Because nothing's developed. People don't realize that the village was really just the, it, the downtown area. It was very limited at the time. The, everything you see today is the expansion in the 20s and 30s. Now we're over to the north side. This is Oakside High School. Um, construction in 1884, become, it becomes the uh, junior high school in 1924. Um, this would uh, encompass four additional um, additions to it. Um, in fact, when they finally merged, there was a conversation that what a shame both districts weren't merged originally and that they had wasted so much money that it could have been more better used, the money could have been better used for, for the schools, to, for the both, both districts. Uriah Hill School, erected in 1912, would round out the North Side School District. Um, this would, again, for the expansion of the North Side of, of Peace Hill, this is District Number Eight. Um, this would be the only school today to be named uh, after a Cortland Town supervisor. He was also the president of the Union Stoneworks on Central Avenue, right near Water Street. Again, an unbelievable, gorgeous-looking facility. I'm so glad this year, 2013, that they reopened the school for the elementary classes. So finally, in, in April 24th, 1923, there was a vote by both sides to merge the two school districts. They would become the Union Free School District. Obviously, they would break away from the town of, town of Cortland, and they would be independent source of taxing the community just for the schools and that's the way it is today. Part of the deal was the um, Oakside principal, Alexander Dunbar, and one of the largest housing projects to his name in his honor, um, he retired. And this image shows you at where he was doing the groundbreaking for the Masonic Temple. And that's the only good image I have of Alexander Dunbar. Long time um, teacher, very involved with the schools, did a lot for the kids. Now you have the principal from Drum Hill. His name is Fred Bowman. Obviously, he's his name is used um, for Bowman Towers. And he was the principal of Drum Hill. But he, he becomes the first superintendent of the Peace Green Union Free School District. Um, and he would do that for another five years until his death. Included in the referendum of from that it was voted on was the purchase of the Baker property. That's what's in this image here. It's on Washington Street near the intersection of Hudson Avenue. Um, was actually bought a purchase for a future grammar school, which had never actually that's what a new high school gets put. But at the time, Drum Hill was uh, pretty pretty new, and they thought that that facility would be used for the high school uh, just for that use, and they could put additions onto it. But as they, the curriculum quickly changed and they knew they needed a lot more facilities, all of a sudden became obsolete. Also, last but not least on the referendum was the replacing of the old Park Street School, Finktown School. And this uh, image will show you the new school that was built and it opened in 1925. What happened to the old Park Street School? It was on a the corner there. Well, believe it or not, they gave it away to the Lake Pagan Fire Department and they used all the bricks, lumber, windows to build their firehouse, which is still there today, 
and on the five mile turnpike that's what it was called or you want to call it today east main street route six it, 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 all, all the material was used you can see this here here's the firehouse itself and that's what it was used for they paid a contractor two thousand dollars to dismantle it and that's all the material from that's old school the dedication of the O'Brien Ferguson Park across from the new Park Street School. Dr. P.W. O'Brien and George A. Ferguson were former trustees of the old school district number seven, and they remained loyal up until their death. They actually made it to the vote, and that's why they're being honored. They, they died shortly after the merge took, took effect. It shows, um, in this image, it shows Dr. Fred Bowman, Miss Anna Shea, she's the Park Street principal, Charles Doyle, he was president of the school board, and members of Dr. O'Brien, Mr. Ferguson, and Chester Smith all the way on your right. Um, just make you a note of it, female teachers at the time, up until World War II, were not allowed to be married, and if they were, they would violate their contract and immediately be dismissed. They had a referendum in 1927 for the new high school, but it also included this building here, it was actually the home of Dr. Coleridge Hart. Uh, it's at the corner of Washington and Hudson Avenue, and that would have been for the, the administration building. But the voters thought it was bitten, being a little bit too elaborate and expensive, and they kill, killed the vote. If this shows you the first graduating class of the Peace School High School. It takes you to Drum Hill, and they would graduate in 1925 out of that. that so that's the first graduating class would be the Peace School High School from Drum Hill. This shows you the new Peace School High School opened its doors in September of 31. With the latest and current curriculums and facilities, including an Olympic sized swimming pool and a Broadway sized auditorium. This, this high school is really a dedicated three year high school. There was no other grades were allowed in this, it was strictly just for high school. Dedication ceremony in front of the new Peace School High School. This is all the members of the school board and trustees, the architect, the architect for the new high school, um, or the builder for the new high school, at the same time also built the Paramount. They were both built at the same time, same contractor. This is just show you Hendrick Hudson High School. Again, it was a high school, and just like in the, in the rural areas, they would build new schools, but they would either be high schools or junior high schools but all grades would be attended in those schools. They weren't dedicated like Pisco. The newly built high school provided all kinds of new programs, academics, including swimming, but this shows you the first time they had a Pisco marching band, as well as they had music and all kinds of great uh, academics were, were being offered. And, and not offered in any other school district. So they had, at the time, some of the best facilities and best programs available for, for students. Follow the feet of the city charter vote for the town of Cortland. Justice Smith would lead a small delegation from the village and take the argument right to Governor Lehman's desk in, in the state capitol. And it was the argument that the school just was so successful in unifying the village that the governor gave the approval for the city charter in 1940. September 54 shows a Hillcrest School um, would open the stores for the first time. This was shows you the, the rapid expansion of the of uh, Peekskill after World War II. Um, it show you how many all new homes were being built. A lot of people coming back from the war looking for new homes, new new a new life, a new beginning. the ribbon cutting dedication of Woodside School on December 13th, 1954, with Principal Robert Harris and Board President Dr. Robert Pertzky. Drum Hill's got us a history. There from the very beginning, Drum Hill was first built, it's being, removed, being removed because of its deteriorating condition and it's showing with ninth graders, Erwin Friedman and Nick Harlow. 1963, the Peace High School Band at the Polo Grounds in New York City performing for the crowd watching 
the New York Jets. The Pisco High School Band performing at the Pew Park for a home game with Pisco High School football team. What it, at the time, I was part of that high school band, and what an honor it was to march for the school in the city of Pisco. And this shows you the new high, Oakside school building built in 1968 to replace the original Oakside, same location, and this is the newer school. The Pisco City School Administration building at the Bird Estate, located on Crown Pound Road, now the present site of Woods 3 condominiums. This was, for a long time, was proposal to build a high school far, far outside of the, the center of the Pisco. And numerous times it was voted down because it was too far away. Then finally, in 1965, PMA closes the stores and now this property became available and that's where they direct your attention to this new property that could have been available for, for the school. Peace School High True Leaders lead a contingent of marchers thanking the local taxpayers for voting for the new high school to be built on the old PMA site on Elm Street. September 1972, the new Peace School High School on the former site of the Peace School Military Academy. September 1972, the Pico School Administration Building would take possession of the old PMA James Ford Building on James Street, across from the new high school building. Twenty ten, the new middle school building on Ringle Street. The old Delancey Cole Hempstead being moved westward of the newly planned Assumption Church Guardian Building. This is where the new um, church would go on First Street and Division. Here's the old Assumption School Building painted the color red and used for another 50 years. The Assumption School being rebuilt in 1957 and up until this year was finally closed and there was rumors that it might be used at a charter school. Now we bring the loose ends. These will be the photos of, of about the school with different images regarding the school. August 1950, Ms. Mil Mildred Giroux at the control board of Peace School High School's new public address system. Pretty fancy, huh? Peace School High School Band, 1954 in front of the Ringgold Street building. Again, wow. <laughs> August 1938. It was a custom when the schools ended um, the year in June, they would t take all the schools and they would set up the swings, seesaws, and the basketball nets. And that's where the summer parks were held at, at the old, uh, old elementary and high school. Um, at the end of the year, they would have a finale or a festival would be held from all the schools who compete up at the Depew Park for trophies. It could be model planes, costumes, pets, um, different things they would build. And in this image, it shows you the top on the entry, entry was the K&S Special with driver Marvin Kritzke and the builder Leonard Steinhardt. Both these students would follow each other in business and were the last owners of Kurzweil's or Capitol Glass and Main Nelson Avenue. Same playground festival at the Pew Park. Here's a two-year-old Jack Travis, who I actually personally knew. He's actually retired down in Florida, but he's dressed as Shirley Temple. I actually thought it was a girl, um, but Shirley Temple and Charlie McCarthy were like the big, big items uh, back in the, in the day, in the 30s, during the Depression. Is, with his mother, Mrs. Travis, the peace police officer, Gordon Gorlich, attempting to console him. Um, I sent the picture down to him. Very enjoyable. Again, August 38, Playground Festival. This is one of my favorite images. It's uh, the, all the kids in costume, and I love the sign that the kids of the Depression 
I love the outfits. They're just perfect, perfect image. Winner of 1960, his young student named George E. Pataki with his winning science fair entry at Drumhill Junior High School. He would become, he would go on to become a three-term governor of the state of New York. Here's, here's a young man in the middle, one of the highest academic graduates at Peaceful High School. He's the one wearing the dark wearing glasses. Wait a minute, who am I kidding? It's me. <laughs> I was dumber than a pound of rocks. But you know what? I sure had a great time, a lot of fun. And today, some of the greatest memories that any person could ever have. Okay, everybody, that wraps it up for the, today for the uh, Peaceful School District story. Um, we hope to see you next month. We're looking to do uh, Peace Club in the streets, street scenes so you can understand how the streets were either named or where they came from. Um, if there's any questions, anybody wants to contact me about any, any uh, part of the images or the subject of, of what we talked about today, my email address is ny9065fg, my initials, at AOL.com. Again, it's ny9065fg at AOL.com. Again, I want to thank uh, myself and Michael Miner for making this happen. See you on Facebook. Hope to see you all over the internet. We're going to have a great time. Thanks.